focus on hitting your goals in every area of your business. Remember, the universe rewards the bold. A leader has to take the risks. Hey, well, Hector, thank you so much for, for getting on with us this morning. Uh, just want to give you a little intro. We're, we're going to have over 300 people on the, uh, on the call this morning. Very, very excited. And, uh, but, uh, but hey, everybody, we got Hector Lamarck on. He's a national sales director with the company. Career earnings over $80 million. Um, he's been my coach, my mentor for over 20 years now. He's got over 14,000 agents, okay? It's probably closer to 15,000 by now. Uh, over 400 plus RVP locations. That's growing like crazy every single month. He's adding RVP promotions. He's a dad, he's a businessman, he's a husband. And he's been financially independent, if I recall, since 1992. He's yeah. been financially free. And we're going to talk. We got a bunch of questions for you, Hector. So okay. I think probably the easiest way okay. is I'm going to throw questions. questions at you, man. Perfect. And then uh, we got so many of them for you. And so, all right, let's start with this, man. If, if, you, were, um, if you were to change one thing about your Primerica career, uh, what would it have been? What would you have changed? Well, that's pretty simple. I mean, there's the, the one mistake I made in my career was listening to Mike Sharp telling me to get out of the field and sell the dream. That was the stupidest thing I ever did. Cost me multi-millions. If I was to do it again, this is exactly what I would do right now, especially in this environment. I think this Zoom thing's phenomenal. If I had, Knowing what I know now, I would have not stopped until I had 100 productive directs in my base shop and a hundred first generation RVPs. I would never have let up for a second. I would have stayed in the field. I would have been doing appointments. I would have done, I would never have let up. I think if I would have done that, I'd probably be making 10 to $20 million a year right now instead of three. Uh, so you don't have to feel sorry for me, but, but it, it was a huge mistake. And I see almost everybody make the same mistake. They get out of the field way too soon. They start managing from from their office and stuff like that 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 to me that's really the only mistake i made in my career everything else i can't think of anything else that i did that i i wouldn't do again other than that that was really really a big mistake i made i i loved being in the field it was really easy for me and um the other thing that i would have done i think a little quicker is i would have uh i, I did i did this anyways and it took me about three years to figure out that uh to only work with motivated people. In the beginning, I wanted everybody to be successful and I spent a lot of energy working with people that just simply weren't motivated and that cost me, and, it, and it's costing most of you right now. I, um, you know, and I figured out that to work only with motivated people, that was in 1986. All of a sudden, you know, my, my first, I'll give you my first year, I made 30, uh, 18 grand, my second year I made 30, 5,000. My third year, I made 86. And that's when I figured out that most people just aren't motivated. They, they just aren't. I wish they were, but they are not. And to put energy into people that aren't motivated is a complete waste of time and energy. We, we all have a finite amount of time and a finite amount of energy to invest in our business and our life. So investing money in that area is like in pouring water into a bucket with holes in it. So when I started to only work with motivated people, and how I knew they were motivated, just watch their behavior. They show up to all the meetings. They, they listen to the audios you recommend, watch the videos you recommend. They, they work on the seven fundamentals. They do all the things that you're asking them to do. You can tell if a person's motivated when they're doing that. When they're not doing what you're asking them to do, then you know they're not motivated. And then you just don't spend as much. You'd be nice to them. You'd be, you know, be friendly, be co uh, you know, congenial and all that, but make sure that you spend and invest your time with people that, that show you that they're motivated. And that's what I did. Then all of a sudden my income jumped to 86,000 in my third year, then 409,000 in 1987, my fourth year, then 855,000 in my, in my fifth year. And then after that started making a million, two million, three million $3 million a year. But that was, that was a huge turning point for me. And I, and I see most people, they don't do that. They're, they're always trying to motivate people. And the reality is 
people either are motivated or they're not motivated. Like you're a motivated guy. I didn't have to push you and ask you, hey, you know, Daniel, are you making phone calls? Are you prospecting? Are you getting on appointments? Are you bringing people? I never had to ask you to do that. You were doing it because you were motivated. So we spent a lot of, you know, we, you know, we, I invested a lot of time with you early in your career when you were getting going and we talked all the time and, and you listened, which is why you've had success. But, uh, and that's, that's, that's one of the biggest things I think everybody should be really, really focused on. I think right now, Hector, more than ever, what's exciting is exactly what you said right now is exactly what's helped me in the last three months recruit like 40 people, 40 new people. Yeah. And, and we've licensed like 11 or 12 of them. And, uh, and, and, and also I've done like 60,000 in personal production. Wow. And the, the way that happened, Hector, is because I, I've been doing some ads, right? I've talked to you a little bit about it. Yeah. I've done some ads. So all I'm doing is I'm telling people, are you coachable? Are you money motivated? Are you, uh, you know, do you have communication skills? If they're the right person, then I say, great, let's get you on board. If they're right. not the right person, we don't work with them. They're, they're the just, next person. You just go to the next person. And, and, right. and so what's happening is I'm bringing in so many better, more quality, motivated people right now. It really is the most exciting time ever yep. right now. Hey, hey, Hector, you know, the coronavirus, man, it's, 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 you know, it's making people a little bit crazy right now. Tell me your thoughts about what's going on in the world and, and what you, how would you react if you were had a business right now that you're running well, in the base thank shop. God for thank God for Zoom. I've been doing these Zoom meetings. I've done I don't know maybe seven or eight of them already, and I and I plan on doing them a lot more of them with, with all over the organization. But that this is one thing that is, I mean, you're probably already experienced this as well. But I'm, I ask people to send me on on Twitter, and people should follow me on Twitter at Hector Lamarck. It's just all personal development stuff. I don't do any. I don't do politics. I don't do anything else. But personal development. In fact, uh, what I do is I, I'm always constantly, you know, working on me reading the right kind of material. And then I'm sharing what I'm reading on Twitter. I do that every morning, seven days a week. I never, I never miss a day of personal development. I haven't missed a day of personal development in, in over 40 years. And that's the reason I've made the kind of money I've made and all, all that. But I think the thing about Every, you know, there's a, there's a saying that Napoleon Hill said that with every adversity, there's an equal or greater benefit if you're looking for it. And, you know, well, I tell you what, Zoom's that thing. And I, I, I'm, I'm right now, I think this morning we're at 3.6 million in premium this month on a pandemic month when everybody's sequestered, basically, right? Our, our, our securities is almost $30 million this month, which is amazing. The market is a total took a dump, but it's the best time to be investing right now. I mean, you're crazy not to be investing at this point because this is going to turn around at some point. It's probably going to take another month or so, I think. It's going to be kind of like it is, but I think it's going to turn the other direction. As soon as the weather heats up, virus, the viruses do not like heat. They die in heat. And so you're going to see a big turnaround probably in the next two or three weeks. I think this next week, it's going to start getting a lot warmer. And that's going to be a big plus for, for, you know, so I wouldn't be too worried about it. I just do what you got to do. Master Zoom. That's an, that you're going to find that, you know, one of the greatest things is that you can recruit people all over North America now. You don't have to just stay in your backyard. I mean, because if you, have, if you understand how to use Zoom and train on Zoom and all that, which you can do the same thing. You don't even have to leave your house to train your organization. You don't have to leave your house to close life insurance or securities. I mean, we're closing tons of business. Uh, I, I'm actually pretty amazed by that, but I'm also energized because I can see this as something really, really exciting going forward. I can see the, the business, you know, doubling and quadrupling over the next three or four or five years. And it's, it's just really exciting. So I, I, I wouldn't be worried about it. Work on, this is another thing you can do during this time. You're, most people are at home, right? You're not out, you're not driving your car. You're not wasting a lot of time doing stuff. This is a great time to work on your personal development, to master how to prospect, master how to set appointments, master how to present properly, master how to overcome objections, master the products and services, 
master how to recruit somebody at a kitchen table, master how to get somebody started. This is the time for you to work on you and get your, you know, if you have, you don't have a securities license, now you should be getting a securities license right now. And you should be learning how, how that part of our business works. It's a huge business. I make a million dollars a year just on securities right now. And I think that's in the next three or four or five years, that's going to go to a million and a half or $2 million a year, just in the securities part of the business. So this is, this is a, we're doing tons of business in all areas right now. So I, I personally, I'm not worried about it. Of course, I'm concerned for the people that are, you know, 98% of the people are not going to be affected by it. There's that 2%, which is generally elderly people or with immune, some immune deficiency of some sort, but the vast majority are not going to get sick. You're not going to die. You know, this is a time to just be proactive and take this time. Uh, if you're at home, especially a lot of people are furloughed from work for a while. They're not working. Don't waste that time. Don't be watching TV. Don't be doing other goofy stuff that people do playing video games and all that work on you improve yourself, you know, cause people want to do business, Daniel, with experts. They want to do business with a the pro. They don't want to, and they want to follow experts and they want to follow pros. So what you want to be thinking about is how can I become an expert at this Primerica opportunity? How can I become a professional? And if you do that, you're not going to have any problem attracting the right kind of people. Like you're recruiting all these people right now and doing all this business. It's because you're a pro and people, people are, are attracted to people that are super confident to know what they're doing. So this is a time to get confident, not to be worrying about the future. Yeah, this, it's huge, Hector, because I mean, people are so scared right now and people are so frightened. But the truth is, is exactly what you said is that every adversity brings with it a seed of an equivalent benefit. And so what is that benefit? The benefit is people are home right now. And also the benefit people are scared. I mean, people are scared for their lives, which we happen to be in the life insurance business, which, you know, we protect lives. And also people are, are, are scared what's going to happen with their money. I mean, we have protected equity portfolios called, you know, annuities that we can protect people's money in the ups and the downs of the market, right. which is just magnificent. I mean, so many benefits yep. to being in, in our business right now for that matter. Uh, it, it's very, very exciting. Hey, Hector, what was your, uh, what was your routine like um, and by the way, I got a lot of these questions throughout the hierarchy. Um, right. What was your re routine like in the early days as you were starting to build your business? Well, I started part-time for a year. So during that time, I, I had Mondays and Wednesdays off. Those days, instead of goofing around, I actually worked. I set up appointments. I went to see people. And I didn't really start recruiting people right away. I didn't quite get the recruiting thing in, immediately. It took me took me about six or seven months to start recruiting people, but I was closing, you know, five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 sales a month on a part-time basis. And I wasn't even going to meetings because I couldn't, my job wouldn't allow me. I work Saturdays, I work evenings. I couldn't go to off nights. I couldn't go to Saturday trainings. So I learned the business, you know, basically just doing it. And, um, but my routine, my tune was working. If you're part time right now, you need to pick days that you're going to work and work those days. Make it like you're you're you have a job and you have to be there and you have to make you know, make an effort and you have to get something done instead of just letting time go go by. One thing I did, which is one of the most important things I learned, is I never went to bed uh, ever for years and years and years. I mean, for a couple decades, I never went to bed without first planning every single hour of the following day in my planner. I used to have a, use a Franklin planner back then. Today, I just would use my, my smartphone. But I never went to bed without knowing what I was going to do at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, all the way to 10 o'clock at night. I knew what I was going to do, who I was going to call. You know, if I, was, if I had to do, maybe get ready for an appointment, I, I planned out when I was going to do that F&A or whatever. And I, I had a plan. I never, I never went to bed without a plan because if you don't plan your time, life just gets in the way. It'll, t you know, whoever has the loudest voice is going to take up your time. And so when I started doing that, I started getting really efficient. I started getting really great runs. That's when you see when I, my income jumped from 86 to 400 to 800, because that's what I was doing. I was managing my time really, really well. All really highly successful people are 
incredible time managers. They are, they're just brutal about watching their time and not allowing people to waste or use their time, which is again, why you should work with motivated people because it's wasting your time when you're working with non-motivated people. So that's one thing I did. And then when I went full time, I, I just, I had a plan. I had a plan like when I was gonna prospect, calls I had a return, uh, follow up with, with new client, new agents, or follow up with, with people that I was trying to recruit, follow up with you know people that I was gonna go see after I had already done their first appointment possibly. Um, and I also included even my personal development in there. I did that, I had a plan. So if I were you, I would have a very, very disciplined plan. Because the one thing we all have in common, you know, Daniel, is we all have 24 hours and seven days a week available to us. The difference is how to utilize those seven days and those 24 hours. The really successful people are just relentless about managing their time. So that's, that's what I did. I would just, and I, you know, I, I had a plan. That, that's basically it. So what's your plan for recruiting? What's your plan for prospecting? What's your plan for follow-up? What's your plan for you know, preparing for meetings that you're going to have? Uh, what is it? You got to have a plan. You got to know when you're going to do it and you can't allow people to infringe on that time. You know, you got to be, somebody would say, Hey, you know, uh, even, even plan time with your family. I used to plan time with my kids when I, when that kids were little, when I started and they'd get out of school at two o'clock and or three o'clock in the afternoon. I'd many days I'd go pick them up and take them to the park or go get a bite to eat or even go to a movie. But I planned that time out. So it was maybe from three to five. And so somebody said, Hey, Hector, you know, can you, can I, can I get with you at three to five? I said, no, I, I'm, I, I have an appointment. I have appointments until after five or whatever. So that I, that they wouldn't infringe on my, my family's time either. I didn't, you know, I wasn't just a, I did not ignore my family if I, that's what I'm trying to say, but I, I planned it out. That's, that's what, if you're new and you're getting going, you better learn how to manage your time. Cause that's, that's the uh, great equalizer, how you manage that. What about accountability, Hector? I mean, how important is accountability and what does that really mean to you? Okay, well, accountability is huge. One of the things, if you're a leader, you have to be uh, really, really relentless about holding the right people accountable. I, you don't need to hold every single person in your base shop accountable, but you need to hold the right people. Those ones that are motivated, those ones that tell you, I want to be an RVP, those ones that say, I want to get big. I want to make a hundred or 200 or 500 or a million dollars a year. Those people, you need to hold them super ultra accountable. And that's what I did. I was, I would you know, constantly be being in contact with those people uh, in the early stages. I called everybody, you know, either that night when I got home and if it wasn't too late, then I'd call them in the morning. So how did, Hey Rick, how did it go last night? Hey Gary, how did it go last night? Hey George, how did it go last night? Tell me what you did. Who did you see? When are you going to close them? When are you going to, are you going to, how many people you got coming to the meeting? How many people you got coming to Saturday training? You know, I was always on top of people, really, really on top of them. And, and, and if people didn't like it, then I knew they weren't motivated. So I stopped doing it. I didn't worry about those people. I worried about only the ones that were motivated. You know, as a theme right here, right? I keep talking about that because it's a huge thing that if you get this, you're going to, you're going to see some great movement in your business. So, I, I think accountability is huge. And if you're not willing to be accountable, then you're not serious about being successful in Prime America. You're just not serious. You're, you're a poser. So you need, to, you need to be okay with that. And a lot of people have a problem with it because it exposes them and they don't like being exposed. And I have a lot of, I've had tons of people who started being accountable when I started holding them accountable and calling them and stuff. And then pretty soon they stopped being accountable they stop checking their numbers they stop you can see it they, they just stop doing it and that's because they're really not that motivated they don't want to be big if they wanted to be big you know if, if you're going to be a navy seal I, I, there's a show called seal team uh, on tv which is my favorite one of, probably one of my favorite shows on tv the discipline that those and it's very realistic in fact somebody um, somebody that that was a, a navy seal said that though it's it's very accurate to what it actually happens but the thing they have in common is their mega their preparations ridiculous it's just incredible how they prepare for for battle 
and and their their accountability is ridiculous. They're super accountable to each other and to to you know to the team and all that. And and it's it's basically the same thing. If you're going to build, you know, you should be thinking about building a SEAL team in your base shop. Who's the SEAL team? Who are the people that are the most committed? The ones that you're going to take into battle that you know they're going to get you have your back. You know they're going to do what's necessary. They're going to they're you know they're going to do the preparation necessary to be successful and win. And our thing you know we don't go into battle we go across the kitchen table you know that's our battle is the, is the kitchen table or now the zoom internet thing whatever but the bottom <laughs> but the bottom line it's that's you know that's where the rubber meets the road for us how are we going to do when we get into battle when, when they say i want to think about it or i don't you know i'm not a salesperson or i don't do business on the first night or you know all that kind of stuff what's your what's your, what's your preparation level to deal with that that's 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 what you got to be willing to do. Talk talk to us about um, and that's huge, Hector. I mean, I, I love that. I mean, that I think that's the 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 great separator between yes. the ones that make it and the ones that don't sure. are the ones that are super accountable. I called you every day for five years. I called right. you every single day, and I think that. And although it was just maybe a, a one minute conversation or 30 seconds, it wasn't a long conversation every day. It was just, hey, look, Hector, this is what I'm doing. This is what I got going. I, I just wrote this sale. I mean, a lot of people know me today in the company from those early voice tell conversations that we would have and you would right. send them out to the entire company. And, but it was every single day results. Didn't get a result. If I didn't get a result, I would say, hey, Hector, I didn't get a result. This is what they said. And then you would say, hey, Daniel, next time try this. Next right. time think about saying this. Maybe you might want to do it this way. And, and by the yep. way, Hector, a lot of people don't realize that most of that training was when I was already an RVP. Right. If you think about it. So, yeah. you know, a lot of people, they go RVP, they get a big head, they think they know everything. And I stayed very humble as an RVP. And I said, Hey, look, this is, this is the, 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 the most important time that I should be accountable and coachable because I got the biggest contract now. Right. Why would I not do everything I'm supposed to do, especially as an RVP? Right. right. And that, yeah, that's, and that's a good point you make. Cause that's how I trained most everybody is like, mm -hmm. like that. I, the, the, the guy says, well, how did it go last night, Daniel? Well, uh, it was a good appointment, but I didn't close. And I said, okay, walk me through it. Why not? What did they say? But, and then, and then I would, then what I would do is I'd role play with you or whoever and say, this is how I would handle the next time. And then I'd show you how to do it. Then I'd say, okay, you do it. And I, that's how I did it. So I'd get people, I would make sure they learned how to do it properly. I mean, that's one thing I think that helped me tremendously is that I checked people's skill level. You know, I wanted to see how did they prospect? How did they set appointments? How do they, how do they present? How do they recruit somebody? Because you, get, you can have people that are actually getting some results or doing okay, but they're really not as good as you think they are. You need to check them to make sure that they're doing everything the way that you do it. You know, because you know, the question I would always ask, you know, say, Daniel, if, if your motivated people were as good, good as you are at the KT, what would your business look like? Well, the question for somebody that's good like you is always, well, it'd be unbelievable. And then my next question is, well, why aren't you spending every available moment preparing your people to be as good as you are? I mean, that's what I did. That's what I focused on doing is training people. I'm huge on training and small on motivation. I, I, I believe when you're prepared, people get confident. When people get confident, they become attractive. The more confident a person is, the more attractive they're going to be. People are attracted to con self-confidence. And so that's what you've got to get people's skill level way up so that they become confident and attractive to other people, you know, and they know what they're doing. That's, that's a huge thing. You should be paying really close attention to your, your motivated people and get, make sure, check, check their skill level, check the way they do everything. And you'll find, you know, right away, you can see why they're doing well or why they're not doing well and where they can improve and you know, little by little you help people improve and improve until finally you go heck man you're, you're as good as I am I'd buy from you you know or I'd join you that's what you want to do you want to get as many people as possible to that super high level of competency 
And then that's how you do RVPs. That, that's how you do it. That's how you, and you duplicate yourself. And before you know it, you have an RVP team. And then, and then if you do a really good job, your leaders learn how to develop leaders through what you taught them to do, you know, which is what you've done and a lot of other people have done. So that's, that's what you want to do. It's always about, you know, you can't have a great company, Daniel, without great people. There's no such thing as a great company that doesn't have great people and you can't have great people unless they know what they're doing and they're super confident. So I paid an enormous amount of attention to developing people. Uh, because at that point, I knew I, I was closing, you know, 80, 90 to 100 percent of the, you know, when I'm on a qualified appointment, it was very rare for me not to close a transaction. Or if I really wanted to recruit a particular individual, it's very rare for me not to be able to recruit that person. And so I knew if I could get people anywhere close to my level of, you know, competency, then my business would be huge. And it, and, and, and it got big because of that. That's huge. That's huge, man. Talk to us about saving money, man. How important is it uh, to save money? And how glad are you that you saved your money? Uh, well, it's huge. You know, I talk to you about that all the time. I've talked to you about that for years and years, and you've done a great job in that area. You know, um, one of the big problems I see in Primerica is people, you know, they're really into the bling, the fancy car, the fancy house, the fancy this, the fancy that. And my thing was, I'm working my tail off. I don't want to have to redo this again later. I'm going to make sure that I get debt free, which I have been for, well, since 1988, probably. And I want to be completely financial. And in other words, I want to have enough money saved that if everything goes to heck in a handbasket, like right now, you know, I have a lot of money saved. I have a lot of income that comes in outside of Primerica. And I also have a business that puts off a, a lot of cash. So when I, I didn't buy my fir, I'm first really nice house. And back then it was a $600,000 house. It wasn't like it was a multi-million dollar house. I had, I had saved a million dollars already by that point before I even thought about it, buying a new car or buying anything like that. And I was very, very frugal. And I've always been nervous about, um, about having debt. I don't like debt. I don't have any debt right now at all. I haven't had debt for many, many years. I have a, you know, a couple, uh, three properties, but I paid cash for all of them. I don't have any mortgage debt. I don't have any car debt. I don't have any, any kind of debt. I just have my overhead in my business, a couple of employees and stuff. It's very low. My overhead on my business right now is about 10% uh, of my gross income which I have, and so that means that my business runs at a 90% gross profit. That's unheard of. Nobody has a business like that where we have that kind of profit margin. And that's the kind of business you can have here. But the first thing you should all have, you should all have an F&A done. You should have a plan to get debt free. That's number one. Debt is the enemy of being financially independent. And number two, you should have a, 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 you know, a plan for getting wealthy, you know, saving and investing, being very, very, you know, very conscious of how to save and invest and, and be slow to, to increase your overhead. Be very slow to increase, especially in the early years. Be super slow about that. You start making, all of a sudden, somebody starts making 10, 15, 20 grand a month. They got to buy the Mercedes and all that. Well, don't do that, you know. No. Nobody cares anyways. You think that's what recruits people and gets people going, but it's not. You know what you know what gets people going is teaching them how to make money, getting them to make money. You teach people how to make money, they don't care what kind of car you drive or what house you live in. You teach people how to make more money and get get their financial life in order. That's what people are really the right people anyways are into. Okay. We're this that's one of the challenges I think with uh, social media is there's so much of this goofy bling bling stuff going on that uh, way before they're ready to do it. Now, if you're making big money and you're you know, making a million, two million, and you want to drive a Mercedes and you want to live in a nicer neighborhood, do it then. It's not, it's not a problem. You just go do it. But wait until you set yourself up first. You know how the, the airplanes, they say if there's a, if there's, we lose cabin pressure, that that thing drops down, that you're supposed to put that mask on yourself first before you help anybody else, before you help your child or whatever. Well, same thing here. Get yourself debt free and financial first before you start helping everybody and doing all this other stuff. Make sure you take care of yours and your own first. 
you know, that, that's what I did. And, oh uh, man, I, and and I think that you're so glad. I mean, as it as am I, Hector. Yeah. I'm so happy and glad, and just almost, you know, I'm proud of myself that yeah, that that be. that when everybody told me to do the big houses and the big cars and all these things, I was driving a ten thousand dollar Maxima uh, when I was making three hundred thousand a year. I had, we were living in a 1200 square foot condo for a very, very long time. And, and I just think that even today, you know, while all this stuff is happening, right, where people are losing their jobs, going out of business and people are struggling financially. And I just look back and I go, this is my biggest message that I'm giving people is please, yeah. please, please know that this is not going to be the last crazy pandemic, crazy situation you know, we, we've been yeah. through how many of these, Hector, have we been through? The stock oh, bubbles, th this, that, right. whatever. Right. And people were here and now they're gone. Right. And it was because they weren't solid. You know, if, if I don't make a dime in Primerica, I'm still okay for the next 20 years. Right. I'm exactly. okay. I, right. I, I, my family is okay. And so that's what we should be thinking, right? Well, you have to, this, this, this pandemic situation is screaming at you to get your financial house in order and have a plan to make more money. You know, right now, you, you, if you have a job, you know, you know, I always the job is just over broke, right? That's what most jobs are. Most people don't have any money. And uh, it, this is a time is if you don't get the message this time, then you're just not very bright. That's all I can tell you. You need to be having a plan to get debt free and financially independent. That's the most important thing. I tell you, when I when I finally had got rid of all my debt, I haven't worried about money for many for decades. All right, I don't worry. I don't even think about money. And even this month, I, my income's already at two hundred thousand dollars this month in a pandemic month and in one of the worst situations that we've well, actually the worst situation we've ever experienced economically in our country ever. Right. Even the Great Depression wasn't like, you know, this is kind of like that right now. And so that if you do things right, you don't have to suffer. You could be, you can be fine. You can take care of your family. And, um, and the same thing's even true. I taught my kids, my kid, you know, Dak really well. You, you yeah. you're friends with Dak and, and Janae, and both of them are like, you know, thank God they're really successful and they're both really great shape. They're not panicking about this situation. Of course, I'd help them if they needed it, but they don't need it because they've done all the right things. They've done what we're talking about. You know, they kept their like, overhead really low and they're starting to make big money now. And, um, you know, that's the, you should teach your kids that. You'd be the perfect example for your, for your children. That, that's one of the things I would recommend it, you know, because it's monkey see, monkey do with your kids. I'm telling you, they, they're paying attention to you. If you're panicking right now because, you know, then they're, they're, they're panicking. They're, they're in that same situation. So make sure you teach that, that philosophy of, you know, getting, getting debt free and getting financially independent. Super, so what, super important. So what advice Hector, like, let's just say somebody starts making 5,000, 10,000 a month, you know, what sort of percentage should they be maxing out as far as at least, at least in cash right now, uh, you know, to get their emergency funds going and things like that. What sort of percentage should people start setting aside? I, I, I think you should a absolutely have a plan to have a minimum of six months of your overhead set aside for an emergency. Like right now, like right now, this, this thing has been like, if you, if you had that done right now and you had six months of your, of what you needed to survive and live on set aside in an emergency fund. And uh, this thing ends up, say it lasts until, the end of April or something like that, right? So that's two months basically where you basically, if you got laid off or you did, you know, your, your company shut down for that period of time, you're going to be okay for at least six months. So you can weather that storm. You can start thinking about doing other things. So uh, that's the first thing. And then the next thing is as your income increases, you should automatically increasing your PACs and the investments that you, that you have, you know, automatic instead of buying a new car, instead of buying a bigger house and, you know, the reality, you know, Dan, when I was building my business, I was never home anyways. I was on the, I was out working. I was out training people and field training people. And, you know, I was not in my house. I, people would tell me, 
because they could see I was starting to make a lot of money. I started making 50 and 60 and 80 grand a month. I lived in an 1800 square foot track house. My house payment was a thousand dollars a month and I didn't have any car payments and, um, and I didn't have really nice furniture and all that. My house was just, a, it was okay. It was clean and all that, but it wasn't special at all. And people, I'd have potlucks and people say, why don't you buy, you know, some new furniture? Why don't you buy some artwork? Why don't you do this? And I said, because my goal is to get financially independent. If I start doing that, buying all this stuff, then I can't get free. And neither can you. Only idiots do that. You know, what, what you financially intelligent people, they first set themselves up. Then they do those things. Nothing wrong with having a nice car. Nothing wrong with having a nice house. But you do it after you set yourself up not before and i think I'll, you know art williams uh, said something to everybody a long time ago i mean i've been in the business 36 seven years something like that and he said and i followed this advice this is great advice he said he said um whenever you're going to make a you know some sort of a purchase or an investment or whatever like when you're going to buy something, not, not an investment, when you're going to buy something, before you do that, ask yourself this, if my income were cut in half tomorrow, would I do this? Would I buy this car? Would I buy this house? Would I, would, would I do that? And if it's, and the answer is, um, you know, obviously if, you, if the answer is no, then you just don't do it. So we, Jan and I, we put off buying a lot of stuff and doing, all that stuff. In fact, lately we've gone the other way where we're really simplified our life. We, we, you know, because we don't have a big overhead and I don't have a giant house. I don't have a bunch of cars. I don't do any of that stuff. I spend the bulk of my money on experiences. I've been to 70 countries. I've traveled all over the world. I, uh, when I do it, I go first class. I've done these private, uh, I've done four of these private jet tours, you know, like one to Asia, one to South Central South America, two around the world trips on a private jet. You know, they're not cheap, they're, <laughs> they're very expensive, but the experience is incredible. I mean, we've seen so many amazing things and done so many amazing things and met so many amazing people uh, because I'd rather do that than spend, you know, $10 million on a house or, you know, it's just stupid. I, I don't need that. You know, I don't need that. I, I, I'm on the go all the time. I follow the weather. I have a, I have a home in Cabo, a home in Newport and a home in, in Las Vegas. And so I, I know I follow the weather. I don't, I'm not in one place very often right now. I'm in Las Vegas, but you know, it's, 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 you have a vehicle in Primerica, where you can have everything if you want to. And it's not going to happen overnight. You're going to have to bust your tail and you're going to have to be disciplined and relentless and persistent and all kinds of stuff, right? And mentally tough. But you have a vehicle that can put you in an amazing, uh, you and your family in an amazing place if you do the right things. If you master the business, you become a pro. Pros get paid, amateurs get exercise. Hey, Hector, um, you know, you, you actually uh, graduated um, at Laverne University, right? Um, yep. In psychology, right? Right. Psychology, psychology. psychology degree. Why? I mean, just from a psych psychological perspective, you know, why do so many people quit? And why do, why are so many, especially these days, why are so many people so victim minded and, and mentally weak? Well, one, because, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of politicians encourage this victim, victim mentality, unfortunately. I mean, um, there's some parts of the, of the political spectrum that wants people to be dependent. They, they need people to be dependent to get those votes. So that's, they, and the media encourages that also. I mean, so that's one of the problems. Um, but I think that the, the, the challenge is, is most people aren't taught the right things, you know, growing up. I mean, they don't have the right example. I mean, I was fortunate. I grew up in a family. My father was, and my mom and my dad were both unbelievably hardworking people and very, very, you know, disciplined people in that respect. So I was lucky. The other thing I think that people struggle with is their people skills are, are not adequate. They're not as good as they can be, you know, and then I, and I was lucky with that too. My dad had just ridiculously fantastic people skills. I mean, it was, he was, a, 
it was like a clinic every time he was around people, watching him, how he dealt with people, how much they loved him and all that. And so I learned how to do that. And your people skills really going to determine probably one of the most important things of masters, how to, how to deal with people in the correct way and how to make people feel special and how to, you know, how to make people like you and trust you because without like and trust, you're, you have nowhere to go. You know, nobody wants to join you. Nobody wants to help you. And if you're a, you know, if you're a jerk, which unfortunately there's a lot of them out there, you know, they alienate people. And when you're a jerk, people not only don't want to help you, they want to hurt you. <laughs> so that's not a good place to be. So it's really learning how to treat people special. And my, my parents used to tell me all the time, and I told this to my children, I said, they would say, you know, um, you know, Miho, the, the one thing that's most important to us is that you're a good person and you treat people well and you treat people with, with respect and you treat people, you know, like, like you want to be treated. And that, that was really important to my mom and dad. And it was really important to me. And that's what I taught my children as well, because in the end, you can't build something great without the help of a lot of people. You have a lot of people that have helped you become successful. I have a lot of people who have helped me become successful. I didn't do this by myself. You didn't do it by yourself. None of us are gonna ever do this thing and become super successful by ourselves. We're gonna need the help of a lot of people. And so you need to learn how to treat people correctly. You know, there's plenty of stuff, you know, uh, on that, that you can read. There's no shortage of information how to, you know, how to, how to learn how to be good with people. Use that, and, that, and that's part of leadership too, part of leadership. You know, if your people, you know, the saying, you know, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? I mean, that's the real truth, they, they, especially too with our wives or our husbands, right, or our children. So I think that's really important that you, you know, you spend a lot of energy learning how to do that in the best way possible. You can learn how to do that. So, um Big base shop. Why is it important that people build a big base shop? Because everything good goes to those who build a big base shop in Primerica. Everything good. All the people you see that are million dollar earners, I, I would say 98, 99% of them, all at some point in their career had a big base shop that turned into, you know, a lot of first generations and then a hierarchy. You're never going to build a big hierarchy without first building a big base shop. And um, that's hugely important. That's how I did it. That's how Rick Susie did it. That's how you've done it. That's how uh, everybody who's big right now. I mean, you look at some of the guys that are doing a great job in there, like, you know, Corey Gay's doing a good job in that area. The Berrigans, there's a bunch of people in our organization. And, you know, Neil Gerfein had a big base shop for a long time. Um, I mean, the youngers did too. Rick did. I did. Everybody, everybody did. So you, you, you have to. You, the only people that don't build big bay shops are people that don't understand our compensation. If you understand our compensation, everything screams at you to have a big bay shop and produce first generation. Already. That's where all the money's at. The money is based in first and primerica. And you're never going to have a lot of first until you first have a big bay shop. That's where all the money is. I mean, you, you know, I have a big hierarchy and I make a lot of money, but my, but as I'm getting older, you know, I'm 63 now. My team's older. I have an older first generation team. You know, like in 19 um, in 1988, I was doing 600 sales a month at first, which is which is a lot, right? So that would be $600,000 a month at first right now. That's what I was doing, but that's what that's what created my hierarchy that does now. You know, typically on a typical month, we're doing close to four million dollars a month in premium and you know, 25, 30 million in securities, which by the way, I think that should be double that. But um, that that's all from having a big base philosophy. I had a big base philosophy. You can't teach what you don't do, by the way. If you're not going to build a big base shop, it's going to be very, very rare that you're going to have anybody in your team to build. You might get lucky, but it's, I wouldn't count on luck. Big base shop is everything. I would be on that morning, noon, and night if I were those those of you listening that would be my number one priority get wide hire directs and build a big base and then teach your people how to build a big base so that you have a bunch of big base first and if you start doing you know 200 300 400 500 grand a month through first you're going to make millions of this thing you're going to you're going to build a big hierarchy don't worry about the hierarchy I never worried about building a hierarchy. I only worried about having a big base and, and strong first. 
It's kind of like your kids, right? I mean, I have two kids and I have four grandchildren. Jan's sister, you know, um, Darlene has five children and like 16 grandchildren. Well, she's way wider than us. <laughs> There's nothing you can do, you know, and she didn't have anything to do with that. Just what happens, you know, so that's, that's the best analogy I, I, I can think of is if you get wide, you want to like my parents had seven kids, right? And so I'm the fifth of seven children. And I mean, my parents are both past, but they had like, 30 grandchildren or something like that. Now they have a bunch of great grandchildren. Well, that's how it happens. And it also happens how it happens in Prime America as well. So a lot of people, because you probably don't talk about it as much, a lot of people don't realize that you average 10,000, basically in today's dollars, you yeah. average 10,000 in personal production for your first five years in business. How, how well, important is it that people lead from the front and actually go and produce themselves. Yeah, yeah, I actually, I actually did it longer than that. But you know, the bottom line is, yeah, you, you have to, you, it, the, all the production I did was all field training. Was, you know, I would, rec I probably averaged like two or three recruits a month, myself, personal recruits. And I probably averaged recruiting another five to 10 or 12 people while I was training people. So I was, I was probably, not only averaging at least 10 transactions a month, I was averaging about 10 recruits a month that I was responsible. They weren't my recruits, of course, but there were people I was recruiting for people. So I was recruiting people, you know, cause I have this, I have this uh, reputation of being a sales guy in Primerica, but I have, like you said, 14,000 agents and we recruit, uh, 35 to 40,000 people a year in my organization. So it's not just sales. It's recruiting too. You can't build a big organization without bringing new people on board. So, you know, I think that's critical that you do, that you focus on that. So when you recruited those directs, the first thing you did is you trained them. Yes. And so, and I think that's like getting somebody off to a fast start. I think a lot of people forget that because there is kind of this, this, this notion, Hector, that I get one recruit and then I write one sale with that recruit and it's all internal consumption. Yeah, that, well, and, that's Amway. And, well, that's Amway. And, and so uh, explain to us why it's so important. You get a new recruit and you got to get them in the field so fast. Well, this is the problem people have is why they don't do this. All right. Number one, they're probably their personal skill sets at closing aren't what they could or should be. So that's the first problem. The second problem is when you recruit somebody, when I recruited somebody, what I would do is I would tell them straight, I, say, I would say, Daniel, okay, the, you don't have to, uh, you know, if you were getting into a franchise, you'd have to invest 50, 100 grand in, in, in a franchise, right? You're not going to invest. The only thing you're going to invest is accessing your warm market and learning how to do the business. The whole point of field training is get you to a place where you are super confident and you can see people and help people and train people on your own. The way that your investments you're going to make is this, we need to put together a list. We need a, I need to have you put together a list of 25, 30, 50, whatever, as many people as you can that are married, children, homeowner, they're in the market that we can go see that I can teach you how to do the business. This is critical because my goal is to get you to the point as quickly as possible where you're independent of me and you don't need my help anymore. That's my number one uh, objective with you to help you get there. So what we need to do first is get that list and I would sit with them and I'd make sure we got that list. I wouldn't just leave it up to them because if you leave it up to them, they ain't going to do it by themselves. Okay. You got to make them do it. It's, like, it's an accountability thing. And then you got to make sure that, that you let them know. I would tell them, I'd say, look, see, and once we get the list, the list to me is a thousand times more important than the IBA, by the way, because People do IBAs and leave, don't ever get trained all the time. But if I have a list and even if I don't have an IBA, I'm going to say, look, this is what's going to happen. This list right here that I, that you put together, Daniel, it's, it's potentially worth 10,000, 20,000, 500,000, a million. You know, I, I know how much I've made in uh, off of recruiting Rick, just Rick, I, and just overrides on Rick's organization over the last, you know, 30 years or so. I've probably made, I'd say, close to half of, of the 80 million, 30 to $40 million off of one recruit, Rick Susie. okay? So I'd say, you know, 
when you find the right people, right? I don't know what this list is worth, but all I know is you need to go take me, we need to go see these people. And if you leave, do you agree that all these people deserve to have a FNA and a, and a plan to get debt free and financially independent? Do you agree that all of them deserve to have that? And they're going to say, well, yes. I said, well, then, okay. I would much rather go see these people and do this with you. But if you quit before you get started, which a lot of people do, right? Then I'm going to go see all these people. All right. Now I'm going to call these. Now I'm not going to get as many appointments. You know, if there's 25 names, I might only get, because I don't know these people, but I'm going to tell them that you referred me. I might only get with 10 of them. But if I get with 10 of them, as good as I am at the kitchen table, I'm going to turn those 10 into eight, at least eight transactions and probably three or four more recruits. And who knows what's going to happen. It could turn into something huge, potentially. But if you quit, you're going to miss out on all that thing. So I, I need to get a commitment from you. Are you going to make sure that we get, we get, you set up appointments and we go see these people? So I would make them do that so that they wouldn't just like recruit them and they're gone, right? And I want that list because I know what to do with that list. And if you quit before you get started, like so many Primerica do, right? I'm going to, I have now, instead of having to go cold prospect, I have a warm market list or a semi warm market list that I can contact these people. Now, if I recruit three people in a month or, you know, three people in a month and I get 75 names and all three quit, now I've got 75 names to call. Now that I'm good. I'm going to turn at least to 25 transactions and, 10 or 15 recruits and all that. So I don't have to go cold call, knock on doors, walk in malls and all that stuff. I don't need to do. I never, I never did any of that stuff because that's what I did. And I had that list. Those names are everything. They're critical. Now I don't want anybody to quit, but, but you know what they do. So you should have a plan for that. And that's, that was my plan. And that's why I was able to keep things going and keep, you know, keep growing my business because I always had that list. I always had a feeling, Hector, like they were going to quit on me in the first couple of weeks. So I figured I wanted to have them on. I wanted to get them on three, four, five, six, ten appointments in those first couple of weeks. I had such a sense of urgency to get them in the field, to recruit them a team, to build them a team, to get them licensed. All those things I had a sense for just because I knew that the majority were going to quit on me you in lock the first them in couple that way. of weeks. You lock somebody in. But I was trying to lock them in as quickly as possible. Sure. So, um, all right, last question, Hector. This is this has been phenomenal, man. Last question. I, I just, you know, you look, you you've been around business for a lot of years now. I mean, you knew 40, business before you forty one years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you you knew business before you came into Primerica. Right. You knew business. You knew sales. Um, I want you to. Explain to me, why is Primerica such a better business option? You know, because we could start a lot of businesses. We could sure. go to a franchise. We can build a business. A lot of places you can sell. A lot of things you can do. Why is Primerica such a superior option if somebody wants to become financially independent? Well, there's, a, there's several reasons. One is, is that the cost to get started is essentially nothing zero today if you get trained you get your money back what it's 49 bucks for an iba right now and then if you do whatever you need to do with securities wise they pay for your securities uh, all that so it doesn't cost anything so it's, it's it's a zero risk opportunity number one the other thing is our market is gigantic it is humongous because our, we're in the business of helping people get debt free and financially independent there's no other company that's doing what we're doing with that middle market. Our, our market is, you know, families that are making, you know, 30, 40, 50 grand to 150, 200 grand a year. So there's nobody servicing that group of people. And it's, it's 80 plus percent of the population of the United States. So it's gigantic. Right now, we have probably less than one and a half percent of the market share right now in the financial service. And it's, it's, it's nothing. We have the, the potential for growth here is gigantic. It, it, this need for life insurance, because people do die, they're going to die, uh, and, and they don't have enough money saved, they need to have that, that's going to be around forever. It's even more prevalent, like you said today, people are more nervous about that than ever, because people are, you know, getting this, 
this invisible thing and, and it's killing some people. So that, that's the, the other thing is you, most people aren't going to die right away, but they're going to live a long time and they're going to want to retire. They're going to want to be in fin good financial shape. Most people want to be in better financial shape. They just don't know how to get there. They have no idea what to do, what questions to ask, where to go, how to get started. You know, if you, most the average person has no idea how to get a mutual fund started and, and we can, they can start with us for as little as $25. So it doesn't really matter. We have a, we have the solution that people are looking for. And then debt is, is the most challenging thing for the average of that middle market people. Debt is what stops them from saving money, from being able to educate their kids, from being able to retire, you know, as, as, as they'd like to. It's that debt is deadly. And we have a plan for that to show people how to get out of debt and then where to invest and save that money long range. I mean, the, the, mark, the average um, you know, mutual fund over the last like 75, 80, 100 years is average around 10 or 11 or 12%. There's nowhere people are gonna get that kind of return over time. Yeah, I know the market has dumped recently, but that's gonna come back too. And, and right now, you know, securities and investments are on sale. They're, they're, it's a fire sale right now. So. And then the other thing is there's no other, you know, people are looking always, always looking at these different, you know, MLM companies out there. The problem with them is they don't have any juice. In other words, what I mean by that, when I say they don't have any juice, there's no, there's the, the commission that you make per transaction is so low. You know, if you're selling, you know, Herbalife or, you know, whatever people are selling, they make almost nothing per, per item in our business. If you're good, you sell a thousand dollar life insurance policy. Even as a rep, right? You're, you know, district leader. You're making fifty per five hundred bucks. If you do a securities transaction, you're, you know, you're making another hundred dollars. I mean, you and you're not spending a lot of time or energy in doing any of that. There's and then there's the override part of it, which is really what makes our business super exciting. I haven't, I haven't uh, seen a personal client in, since probably. Uh, I don't know, 1992. So how many years is that? That's like 28 years. In 28 years, I have not seen a client. 1992, I was making about close to a million dollars a year. And, I, and since then, I've probably made $75 million plus, And I have not personally seen a client in all that time. All I've done is train people and teach people how to do the business. You know, so there's, the, the, there's no other business out there that I know of that has the kind of upside potential, the, the multi-millions of dollars that you can earn, my investment in my business, what I invested out of pocket to start my primary to make the 80 plus million dollars, I invested about $1,500 because you used to have to pay for your securities exam and there's life, there's, there's school and all that. So I invested $1,500. All the money I have since invested in my business, you know, opening offices, all came from profits from Primerica, my Primerica business. I didn't have to borrow money. So my out-of-pocket expense to make 80 plus million dollars was about $1,500. Show me, you show me a business that has that kind of potential that you can invest that little. All you really have to invest is time and energy. You have to pay the price to become a pro, to become an expert, to get really good. And the upside is gigantic. I mean, there's no reason why everybody in the call, if they really, really, really wanted to, and they did the work, couldn't make a million dollars a year here. I believe that with everything in me. Now, I know most people aren't going to do the work. They're not going to be disciplined or focused or relentless enough, but everyone has the capacity, the ability to do that. There's not a person on this call that if they really, really committed with everything they had, that they couldn't make a million dollars a year here and get debt free and financially and become wealthy at our business. I believe everybody can. I know not everybody will, but I believe everybody can. It's just a decision away for you. Well, Hector, this has been incredible. Um, what uh, amazing insight. We're getting comments like crazy. The, I mean, insane, unbelievable. This is the best <laughs> information ever. I mean, this is powerful, Hector, and I just, I'm so happy that, um, you know, that we were able to do this today because so many people right now, they're just begging for answers, man. They're just begging for an opportunity, and they, if they really paid attention today, not only did they find a great opportunity, but they also 
saw the, the, you know, saw exactly the steps to take to make that a reality. And so, uh, again, I appreciate your time, Hector, so much. Do you have any final thoughts? Yeah, for, just, for uh, yeah, you should, you guys should follow me on Twitter at Hector Lamarck. My, you should follow me. I'm, I'm telling you, it would be helpful to just take you three minutes to read my text, my t tweets every day, but they'll be helpful. I promise you. And then, um, the other thing is, um, you know, don't, don't let this thing pass you by. You're at a very special place in time. You got a great leader here in, in Daniel and Karma, and, and you, should, you should follow what they're telling you. Because they did everything I told them to do. If you do everything that he tells you or she tells you to do, I promise you you're going to have a huge, huge success this thing. Don't, don't let it go by. This is a, and you're, you know, I don't care where you're starting from. It doesn't matter where you're starting from. All of it's learnable. I didn't know one thing about financial services, about investments, about insurance, about in any building an organization like this. I didn't know any, I knew how to sell, but I didn't know how to do this. And I learned how to do it. And so can you, because the timing is amazing right now. This is a really, really the best time you could ever possibly be. I know it sounds crazy with this pandemic going on, but I'm telling you, I know Daniel's is, I, I'm super excited right now about what's coming you know, in the future with this thing, especially with the Zoom thing and all that. So go be awesome. All right, everybody. Thank you for getting on today. Let's give it up for the incredible Hector Lamarck. Go be big. Go be great. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Dream big. God bless. See you soon. See you soon.